Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. I apologise for being late. We were just uh, chatting and celebrating the news, of course, that Chrysensio Somerville has just won Player of the Year in the Championship. Archie Gray, Young Player of the Year, and we've got three players in the team of the season, that being Rutter, Chrysensio Somerville, and Ethan Ampadu. Do, do, do. So, happy days. Listen, uh, service announcement. I want to try to keep this as positive as possible. If you do have any questions, you know, you want to put to us in the panel, the, the Fantastic Four, if you like. It's a shame we don't have Danny from Not Another Leeds pod because he put up some sort of edit of us dressed as... I mean, to be fair, I forget the names of the Fantastic Four, but Luke, you would definitely be that gadget that's made of stone. Like, that, the you've thing. got that lock... To- the thing, that's it. Yeah. Not because you look like the thing, but I'm thinking <laughs> of... You know the film, what they brought out the film? That actor, Vin, he was in The Shield. You have a look of him, if I'm being honest. Do, I, usually get, know um, the... I usually get a... Uh, a retired Jason Statham if he like that, got man. addicted to food. <laughs> I'd take that, mate. I'd take that every day of the week. It is what it is. Um I wasn't I wasn't throwing shade there, BOA, but I just think, yeah. I don't know. There's a woman in it, isn't there? Either you could be one and um is the Silver Surfer? Locky, you know all about the Fantastic Four, surely. I know you're a bit of a comic nah, nerd. I, I am. I, I, I haven't watched it in a while, mate, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's a fire okay. one, isn't it? Okay. Not the best the start to the stream, one. though. Yeah, yeah, there is a fire one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, there is. Uh, but yes, congrats, congrats, congrats to Archie and Creed tonight. And like Damar says, Leeds are cleaning up the awards. Anyone watching that would think we're well, not a bad football team, really. But if you look on social media and you see fan reaction over the last forty-eight hours, we're worse than shit. Um, and I want to try and bring it back. It's tough, I can't lie. I've been down as well, right? This morning I woke up last night, I was like, what's the word? Uh, disconsolate, I think, like uh, abject. All these, I know, that's impressive, isn't it? All these different adjectives where I'm like, I just don't know anymore. Like before Blackburn, I was certain, genuinely, I was like, we've still got this because we're going to beat Blackburn. Definitely going to beat Blackburn. And obviously, we'll get into the game and how it happened. And, and then I was like, oh, shit, I genuinely don't know what happens now. And I don't think anyone can can predict it. The facts are, we've got three left. Ipswich have got three. Southampton, I'm not really... I know you might have a difference of opinion, but I'm still not looking at them yet. But Leicester have four. Um, and you can't predict it. You can't predict it. If you look at the form table, Leeds are in the relegation zone over the last five. I think Leicester about 17th. Ipswich are fifth or six. Um... So it's too hard to predict. Um, what I will say, though, over the next four, Leeds United have QPR and Borough away. I want to have a conversation today on whether or not playing away might actually help Leeds United because these teams are going to have to come and have a go and not sit 11 men behind the ball. Um, I watched the Middlesbrough Ipswich game and Middlesbrough had chances because Ipswich came to play and Middlesbrough wanted to get something from the game. So that could play into our hands. Um, there is that. Obviously, Leicester have... Two huge games in West Brom and, and Southampton at home. They're rock hard. They're like, for me, arguably the worst fixtures you could want at this time of the season. Two of the toughest games. And obviously, Ipswich have Coventry and Hull, which are still in with a shout of um, shout of the playoffs. So I would argue we've got the easiest of the next two as well. So there are reasons to be positive. Um, Luke, I'll come to you, mate. How, how how are you feeling, bro? I know we said off air, you've stayed away from social media, probably a smart thing. What I do now, mate, and genuinely it has helped me massively, I'll make, a, I'll make a tweet and then I just mute it. And then I don't know what's being said. I've probably been quote tweeted called worse than shit, but I don't even know, <laughs> so I don't care. Um, that's probably the way to do it, bro. Give it a try. But how are you feeling overall with the club and where we go from with three games left? Obviously... Obviously, a bit a bit downbeat uh, following following the performance at the weekend. Uh, well, yesterday it was when it feels like forever ago. Oh, was it yesterday? Was it? For, yeah, it was yesterday lunchtime. Yeah, it was, it yeah, feels man. like it feels like longer than a day ago, doesn't it? But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've already I've already made peace with the straight afterwards. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 I tweeted something straight after. Isn't Twitter funny when 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 things are going to shit? It's just it's just yeah. a peculiar place to be. Um, and and yeah, I, pretty much that, mate. I'm, do you know what? I don't. I didn't even mind the performance. We just didn't create anything. It was just the create creativity that we're lacking, and 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 I've got my own views on that, and as to why we're not creating things. But um, the, the actual performance, we don't. We we control it again. We we keep having these conversations. Eighty-five minutes, we were in control of that game. Probably more. 
uh, and and we still come out of it with zero points, or, or with the week before with, with with one point, and it it's frustrating more than anything, isn't it? When you can be so so dominant um, in in in, a, in ninety minutes and 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 come away with absolutely sweet FA, so. But yeah, like I say, made me peace with it. We can all look forward. The worst case scenario is that we're in the playoffs, which which isn't an, an ideal situation, but it's not the worst situation we could have been in. I think if we go back to the, to the first month of this season, August, we probably would have all sna- snapped your hand off for, for playoff football, given that first mm-hmm. first month. Um, so yeah, dejected, downbeat, but optimistic as always. I think there's I think there's a lot of positives that we can take, but I think now is you know. It, it's going to be who wants to, who's got the biggest cojones, who who really yeah. wants to go up now over these next few games. Hundred percent. I, I, listen, I always agree with what you say, Luke. But one thing I'm going to disagree with you on this one. I thought we created yesterday, bro. I think. I, I, we... I mean, in, in comparison to recent games, I think I think yeah, we did. Yeah, but, true, but, but, true, we, true, true. But but we're certainly not for a team that was spent that spent probably 60, 65 minutes in the in the opposition third. We didn't create enough chances, did we? Not uh, and not enough goal scoring chances, shall we say. There, there was there was chances, but but yeah, ultimately, uh yeah, in comparison, I'll I'll, I'll let you have that one. I think I think compared to, to, to prior compared to Sunderland. Yeah. We did, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. Yeah, fair. yeah. But that's not it's a low bar. It's a low bar. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very low bar. Um Colin does say all the big teams dropping points this week. Liverpool, Arsenal, Leicester Leeds. I was certain we would beat Blackburn, hence paying a fortune for flights and hotels. Uh, well see, this is what I mean. Like people yeah. It it, it affects everything that my mate actually I spoke to earlier on and he says I, I booked a hotel for the fourth in Leeds. I'm now considering whether I cancel that and then have to book one in London and book travel to London for the playoffs. And it's like all these different things that we don't actually think about at the time, you know, because there's loads going to Leeds on the 4th and there might not be any reason to. And then it's like, shit, now I'll focus on maybe if we get to London. And we still might not even get to London, you know what I mean? Knowing Leeds history in this. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a wild, wild few weeks for sure. Um, but, yeah, Colin, hopefully we can bounce back. Uh, that's for sure. Um, Lockie, have you got... Like, uh, any overriding thoughts? I know I spoke to you a lot. You were just as deflated, and it's unlike you, to be honest, mate. You're normally quite uber positive as well, so you, you really hit you hard as well, I guess. Yeah, to be honest, mate, it's this sport, this football, because obviously I was yeah. working that, get, got relegated with them. So uh, it's kind of kicked my butt recently. It's not <laughs> fun, but the one bright spark in Leeds are now deciding to not win, which is brilliant. And the fact that I had to spend... What, 120 quid all in all, trains and tickets this week to go watch them and I've seen a point. Um, bit gutting, but it is what it is. And then having to get on the train back to Manchester afterwards for an hour and a half, being delayed and stuff like that. Lovely stuff, yeah. So it, I've been in a great mood the last few days, mate. But yeah, yeah, it, I, I, yeah, I saw Smarty put it earlier. It was literally that, it's so much similar to that Wigan game and the PLs that that was. We did dominate the ball. I thought we, we got forward better. We were more kind of even left and right. We went both ways. At times, even though his touch was horrible at times, Rutter did find spaces, especially for the first kind of 20 minutes. And we looked good in that sense. But I think Luke's right in the sense that we didn't create these clear chances, but we created a lot of kind of chaotic chances. You know, we did create, like, I think the Gruev chance in the post that he probably should have hit on target, the Ampadu header two of Bamford's chances near the end, you know, the Nonto shot, which the keeper made a save, Ruta had a shot at the end, which the goalkeeper saved. Like, there's, I've got a tick down here. There's, there's loads of, like, kind of... I mean, most of them came from crosses. Um, that's kind of how we could penetrate them. We couldn't really get in any other way. They were quite solid centrally. But I think a lot of our end product, ironically, from crosses, which was, wasn't good enough. Um, mm. How many times did we hit the first man, like our corners? You know, Nonto, I thought, was probably our best player, but there was times when he was crossing it. Same with, you know, Gruev, I saw Archie Gray do it. They all hit the first man, and it's so frustrating. But then you look in the box, and we've got one player in a position to attack the ball versus six defenders. And you're just saying, guys, take that, get in there. We're not going to score goals from that. It's going to take some lucky deflection to get in. And that was a frustration for me, because I do think they were there to be beat. I really do. Mm. They had one, well, they had two huge chances, one from a cross, which I think Connor Roberts got a deflection on. Melia makes a ma- mint save to Me- Smodic as well, actually. Yeah, yeah got yeah, down, yeah. got down to the left, in yeah, he? Yeah. yeah. But And then they had the chance in the second half, but it was quite on the chance that came from just a, a goal kick, not winning your battles twice, losing your man, 
yeah, can't do can that. I ask, like can once. I ask you on that chance, Lockie? Because obviously you look at the game from... I know you were in the ground, but you've probably watched bit, yeah. bits back. But that goal is on Farker, and I'm not big for criticising him, right? And I know it's route one, and I know it's easy. But if Gruev is still in that sixth position instead of Greer, that doesn't happen for me. Every ball or everything that went over, Gruev was in that space and dealing with it all. And I ju- and you could argue even at right back Byram for maybe it was too many changes at once because what happens is the ball comes over, Byram's all over the shop. Rodon then has to go to the header for Gallagher. No Gruev because Gray for me isn't as apt in that position as what Gruev. I'd have took Gray off personally. If you're gonna if you're gonna go all out attack, make sure you have a proper number six who's gonna sit there instead of Archie who's not gonna play that role long term. And I just think, listen, everyone's annoyed with the non tour one, and I get it. But Farkas explained it; it's due to fitness. He said he did want to play him, and I get you playing the game now. But what if he then wouldn't have been able? Because for me now, non is gonna be at a position where he can play the rest of the three games for the full ninety minutes, unless he needs changing. But I think. Lockie, I don't know what your opinion is on that, because it, it was a Gruev-shaped hole that was missing when the ball went route one, yeah. I felt. So, they, they, if they were going to get in, it was through that. They did it two or three times in the first half, that, that kind of counter, long ball. Pearson won a lot of headers against Ampton Road on all day. He did. They threatened it many times, and then Dolan and Smodix had run off him, right? And, and there were two or three times in the first half where they did the same thing, but, yeah, we got back quite well. This one, yeah, Archie loses his man. Would Gru ever got there? Probably. I think Gruev's a really good tracker. We know that. He's really good at tracking his men. Gray's different position, understanding where he should be. He was ball watching when Ampadu went up for the header. So, didn't follow his man, lost him. Yeah, Ampadu didn't win the header. He's going for it. You've got to win it. You know, you got to win your battles. You're right. Look, and in the first half, Gruev did it. There was one where I think Colin Roberts gave it away and Gruev was the one tracking back and delayed the play. And that's kind of what you needed in that point. So, yeah, I think... There is a question as to why he did that. I think it's, again, managing minutes. But when you make a mistake like that, you've got to look and say, well, let's just stick with what's kind of working, what we know works. And Gruev is a really good tracker. They were winning headers, so you needed him in there. Yeah, it's a tough one to take in it. And and there's obviously reasons for poor goals like that. We should not be conceding those type of goals. But it was coming. If it was going to come in, it was coming that way because Pearson did it in the first half two or three times. And it was Pearson, mm. Schmodix, and Dolan every time who were involved. Um, and yeah. we didn't do enough to combat it at all. Yeah, it was poor. From everyone. Yeah, I, I know it was. It was really poor. Um, Evie, a lot was made in the run-up to the game about changes. He's got to change it. That's all that happens. Is apparently, if he just changes it, we'll win a game. Um, and he did do that, you know. He dropped Bamford. Okay, you might argue he should have gone with Joseph. But he did, you know. And I felt, personally, although I did... Piro was pretty poor in the game personally, but I felt he was right to give him a go because he had come off the bench the previous ones and actually injected something. So he comes in. Roberts came in at right back and played really well. Nonto for James. Uh, Gray in midfield. Were you all at, like seeing the line up and afterwards? I know it's easy with hindsight, but do you, do you think he made the right changes going into the game? or Everything's easier with hindsight. Um, but I do think that I would have rested Rutter because he just hasn't been as effective and in quite a few instances had we been facing better opposition, he's actually given the ball away in really in a lot of places where we're quite vulnerable to counterattacks as well. Um, I would be bringing him on as a sub because I still think he has a massive um, part to play and I still think that he's a brilliant player but you cannot deny that he is not the rutter of mm. January or February. He just isn't. Whether it's injury, whether it's injury, and this is the most amount of minutes he's ever played, the pressure, there's lots of things basically stacking up against him. And I personally would have had... Um, I would have had Joseph on and Nonto on instead of Piro and Rutter have Nonto in that 10 because Nonto likes to cut in anywhere. So he often ends up in the midfield and he is very good at picking out a pass. Um, And I think that 
Joseph will give you more options of, you know, he can go to the wing, you know, which is what Rutter does as well. When he's on it, he'll be everywhere. He's He plays in every single one of those positions a- along the front line at some point or another during the game. So I think the changes were almost right, but they weren't quite right. I think he was right to drop Bamford because he has been poor consecutively and has missed some diabolically easy for a footballer um, to caveat that chances um, and the frustration with him as that, well, I've said it all season as he's, he's a divisive player, even when he's playing well, people will criticize him. And when he's playing poorly, everybody, even the people that have been quite sympathetic towards him will criticize him. And we don't need that right now. I think if Matteo Joseph misses the same chances that Bamford does, Nobody gets on his back. Everybody can understand that he's very young, very inexperienced. Nobody will will start being toxic towards him, whereas, unfortunately, Bamford is a really easy target for everyone to just say it's his fault. The same with Cooper at the back. They're just really easy targets to kind of go. I think Farker was right with his changes. I don't think he chose the right people to, to replace them. I think Rutter should have dropped off because I think you bring Rutter on at 70 minutes those players can't handle Rutter fresh legs and as well if he's got something to prove again we said this earlier on in the season the need for competition and if Rutter knows he's played surely if you're looking at yourself and evaluating yourself and they go through their performances surely he knows he has not been good for several games and I would say even before the hernia operation before the international. Oh, yeah, he yeah, was covering it, was it up by getting a couple of assists and a couple of goals, but he hasn't played well since probably February. Like, if if we're being truly honest, when you evaluate his, if you just kind of isolate him as an individual and and take away the 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 stats and just look at you know I test him, he's a frustrating player. And he's not giving the same value that he did earlier on in the season. He can be frustrating and pick out a pass that nobody else will see. He's not doing that right now. And nobody should be undroppable in this team. And for me, it's side before self. And he needs to know that he can still make an impact, but it should have been from the bench. Because Mm. it's the same reason why Dan James made a good substitute earlier on in the season you can't handle Dan James's pace when you've had, you know, 70, 75 minutes worth of football in your legs and you've got Dan James running at you. If you've got Mr. Giraffe with his legs and arms that go in all sorts of directions coming at you when you've been playing for 60 minutes, you know, you're not going to be able to cope. Whereas if they keep him quiet, keep his confidence down, they know how to how to deal with it. And then we have no creative spark. When, when Rutter's not on it, the majority of the time, we are not on it. Mm. No, I think just to elaborate it. on that, Joe, just really oh, quickly, man. and, and yeah. elaborate slightly on 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 the point I made about why we're not looking that great creative creatively at the moment. I think, I think, yeah, Evie, pretty much a bit. The majority of that is is spot on with regard with regard to Rutter. But if you remember early on in the season when when Piro was playing in the ten, we got worked out really quickly and then this new great idea that was to play Rutter in there nobody knew much about him Rutter had a great had a massive lengthy purple patch where mm. it was everything he was doing was working teams have now worked that out it's up to Farker to find another op- op- option um teams teams have very quickly worked out that if they play five five and four behind the ball so they've got nine men behind the ball 10 including the goalkeeper that they can quite that they've got luxury that they can actually they know that we're not going to switch the ball left to right. We don't do that. So they know that if Chris Chris Edge Joe gets the ball at his feet, he's either going to cut back on his right foot and shoot, or he's going to cut back and lay it back to whoever's playing at left back or or one of the central midfielders. It's telegraphed. It's it's we've become too obvious and too you know too easy to to, to play against it effectively for, for teams who are quite happy to defend for the for the majority yeah. of games. Um but yeah Rutter as well in there. Um I I mean I I go back on record saying I, I didn't ever think he was the answer to, to our number 10 problems and it's very easy for me to come on here and say that now now he's struggling in there. But I'd never thought he was a natural 10. I thought yeah what he's doing for us is absolutely great but it's it's got a lifespan which is a relatively short lifespan and we will get worked out quickly. If they've put, if there's two players on on Rutty, he'll lose the ball 9 times out of 10. Mm-hmm. 
And the same with uh, Creed Somerville as well. Yeah, yeah, there has. And, you know, I've seen even takes yesterday about, look, for me, yesterday, everything that the fans wanted by Joseph starting was given. Um, yeah. I think I think we went down the right a hell of a lot more. Um, and whether or not, the, you know, that's because there's non tour or maybe Archie was aware they were down on the right road and passed it out to the right much more. Um, we changed the lineup. People again bemoaning subs. Um, he, he made them earlier than he ever makes them. He made them 60, 68th minute. Um, Joseph comes on with 10 to go. Makes them much, much earlier than, than we usually um, uh, used to. Um, do you... Luke, do you think that's a sign of pressure f- for Farker? Just that, I just couldn't, because he's been pretty, um, like, this is my, you know, I know what I'm doing, ba 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 bam. And it's like he's then gone, right, hey, I'm going to change it, and hey, I'm going to change Look, can I just, let me just qualify. Look, look. Subs don't need to be on half time, Dr. Cox. I just want to respond to that. Barely any manager makes changes at half time. I'd love to know the stats behind it, but you do not throw what you've built in all week if it's nil nil at half time. Just because, yeah. honestly, this this is where I've got to with it now. Like, And I know I'm a content creator, so what am I to say? Because I'm sort of doing the same thing. But everyone thinks the fucking managers. They're I was weird. Just that say exactly that. I was everyone just say, thinks like... they're managers. It's like. Give it a rest, right? I'm sorry. I don't mean to upset anyone. But it's like, someone just said in the chat earlier on, and I can't help but get triggered. Yeah, he gave the fans what... But, you know, do you think he really cares about what any of us think? If you're really yeah. honest with yourself, do you think you, do you think he looks in the mirror and goes, I've been checking Twitter and they really want me to play two up top. I'll start playing two up top. I don't <laughs> care. He doesn't care. Yeah. Nah. Fuck. I think honestly, I think, it's easier. Says, go on, Luke. Sorry, I'm getting. Annoyed. No, I think, I think, I think about Farker. I think I, I, I pretty much hit the nail on, on the head there. I very much doubt Daniel Farker watches the Just Your Football Show and yeah, reads exactly. somebody. I mean, he should. He should. But I mean, he should. Yeah, he's probably a subscriber. Actually, to be fair, if you, if you had watching Daniel, oh no, better's not bad as well. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I mean, in terms of Daniel Farker, I think he's showing, showing signs of pressure and, and changing yeah. things around. But but no matter, it seems no matter what he does, everybody wants something else. I'm seeing Nonto in the ten now. All of a sudden, everyone wants to play Nonto in the ten, and that we shouldn't have, you know, we should we shouldn't have dropped Dan James. And and and, and it, sorry, this isn't this isn't necessarily just you, Evie. I've seen it all over. But I'm gonna say I've said it for months, so I'm not just changing my opinion because no, Rutt has yeah. kind of been failing. Have, yeah, I yeah. said it from months ago from the Premier League. I thought that Nonto could play the ten. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I'm sure he could. But what I'm saying is, is this? Are we at the right state? I mean, it's not, something's not working now. So Daniel Farker's now made three changes from his starting lineup, which were big changes. Let's be honest. He's brought in, you know, he's he's, he's dropped Daniel James, who who's had a, a great season by all accounts. Yeah, he's been been relatively quiet on the back of this. It's, it's, in fact, since his since his penalty miss, unfortunately, but. Um, He's then he's then brought Archie to midfield, which everyone's been screeching for all season. Ineffective for me, relatively ineffective. He didn't didn't offer what as much as I'd expect. Um, and the other change was Connor Roberts in at right back. Uh, sorry, the other change was was Bamford out up top. So it's just, how many changes do you have to make till people are happy? Do you know what I mean? It, it's mm-hmm. not working. Obviously, the changes that we're making aren't that effective so that would suggest to me that actually he could play any players in them positions and we might still come out with the same result we've come out with the worst result when he's made changes we've lost at home which has not happened all season sometimes you just got to sit back and actually think you know where are we can i can i as well and sorry i'm going to bring it over to you folks and you are right kill gallon i do obviously listen to the chat and i was saying is the pressure getting to him because because for me and people don't want to hear it, and and I think it might have been someone said the other day that this is turning into a Bamford channel, but I, I would have argued we'd have looked better, and and people don't want to hear it, but we'd have looked better with the changes minus the Piro for Bamford one. If Bamford had started the game, we'd have looked better, and people won't want to hear it because they go, oh, but he missed the sitter. Well, guess what? Piro didn't get in the box. Piro didn't ever get on the end of any of those chances. If you look at the heat map, the majority one second, the and you can't, yeah. The 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 majority in the heat map of his best touches were in the centre circle. We're in the centre circle. So I know people won't have it, but genuinely for that 45, 
would have looked better with Bamford for the original 45 with him in there. And um, now everyone as well, just another thing, everyone said, let's get Archie in midfield. It's an easy change. Put Roberts in. We lose yesterday. Now everyone's saying Archie's tired. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, get him in midfield. They want him to do more running. That's, we'll yeah, do more running in the midfield. Get, okay. get him in midfield now. And then, and then when we lose, it's like, Farker's going to nah. break him. He's, yeah. Farker's going to break he's, Oh, he's going to break him. And it's like, what do you want him to do now? What are we doing now? So are we putting Kamara back in? And, and, and what? Because I remember the same situation when we were struggling during the mid-season and everyone was saying Archie needs a rest at that point and that he's not a right back on that. And look how that worked out. My point is, like, no, they haven't been saying rest Archie for weeks. I haven't seen it, bro. I haven't seen it. They've all been saying get him in midfield and get Roberts on. Go on, Evie. You wanted to respond before Lockie comes back in. So one thing that I would say is obviously <laughs> with losing Bamford, it was pointless utilising the right-hand side because Pirro isn't there to receive the crosses. So we made a change because we saw something went wrong in the previous game because Archie was stood on the, the side kind of waving for somebody to give him some attention and pass the ball so that he could start a movement down the right. But we then took off the person that Dan James is built for. I know, Gruev, I, I know Nonto came in instead, but we've got nobody actually crossing and we've got nobody to receive a cross either. So we're again, limiting the ways that we can actually form an attack. If you want to use the right hand side, Dan James, Archie or Dan James Roberts is better when you have a number nine and Pirro doesn't make the same movements. He isn't expecting the ball to actually appear in the box. So there's it's pointless because unless Nonto comes on and attempts to shoot, we've got nothing down the right-hand side because even then when he does do that, it's just the exact same as what Somerville does. They both cut in. So we've got no... The defenders can defend both players equally because there's no difference in between really the way that they attack. They they run fast, cut in, work it round four players, attempt to shoot, it gets blocked, they counter. That's how it works. Whereas at least when you've got Dan James and Somerville on, you've got two different types of attack. So and and also they're versatile that they can swap over sides. You know, we've done that a few times. So then the defenders don't know what style they're defending and don't know who they're actually going to be defending. Whereas Nonto and Somerville are very, very similar when they play on the wings. I'm not saying that Nonto is similar when they play, when if he was given the chance in, as the number 10. But what was the point of utilising the right-hand side when we've got nobody to actually do anything in the middle of the box? It, it, if you're going to do that, there should the change should have been Joseph. If you, I still agree that there was... Bamford deserved to be dropped on his form, not because the fans are screaming to do it. He is in poor form. So you have to attempt to make those changes. But if there's nobody going to be in the box, what's the point? Just keep it as it was. You know, at least then everybody knew what we were doing, you know, and, and knew what they were doing. Whereas there was too many changes, too many stylistic changes for, mm. for that. You know, we didn't Absolutely. actually utilize the right hand side. Just on that, how many chances? I mean, other than the obvious one that Bamford missed, how much? How much actual ball has he had in, in decent areas? How many chances he actually had realistically that you can count? I know you could you could you could, you could, you could scream that he's had he's been in poor form, so you blew in the face. But if you, unless we can actually, there was one that one good chance that he's missed recently. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we haven't had the service, and it comes from, it all comes from creativity, which is the players behind the centre forward effectively. Yeah. Um, Jamie, you're right, mate. You're right. I did say that. <laughs> I get triggered, bro. I can't, I can't lie to you. I'm emotional. You are right. You are right. I didn't say your opinions were invalid, but <laughs> I, I did then go say what I would have. Yeah, you're right, bro. But we're just all emotional. I just get triggered sometimes, but that's why you're here, innit? To trigger me half of the fucking time anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> right, Lockie, having having heard everything that's just been said, mm -hmm. um what any thoughts on, on what we've said? Yeah, I, I expand on what Eve said, I agree hundred percent. 
so the issue was a lot when we got it out to Nunto, like if you said, you look in the box, I did a video earlier on this, this exact topic, because it was annoying me during the game, because I was I was right by the away fans just below him, so I could see the line in front of me when we got that ball in the box. And so Piro used to be a left back, I didn't know this, he used to be a full back to Joe Piro. Oh, did he? To, until like he was I think, like 17, 18 or something like that, I think. So he doesn't have that kind of instinctive striker in the box, he doesn't have it because he wasn't one, right? So, so you're asking him to instinctively be in positions where Matteo Joseph, who is a natural striker, and Patrick Bamford would be, and he's not that. You look at him in the box, he's always marked. He's never really free. And that's an issue when you're looking for someone in the box. When we brought Matteo Joseph and Patrick Bamford on, for, yeah, look, Bamford had a header he should have scored. But they were in the right areas. They were really, really in the right areas. And the crosses started working and we looked dangerous and we looked like, it, like we could score from one of those crosses from Purple or James. With with Puri, you don't have that kind of, uh, you don't have that awareness with him of where he should be in the box. He's good, at, he's good at the edge of the box. He finds good space at the edge and he's got a decent shot and he knows where the goal is. But in that box where you need to kind of be quick over two or three seconds, better than the defender, to find that space, he's not got that. He just hasn't, he's not that player. And we really struggled to find players in the box yesterday, especially for the first 65 minutes. And that is part of Perot. And I screenshot every time we tried to cross the box on where Perot is. And I think six out of the 10 times I screenshotted, he was in a position where you can't really be picked out. And that's that's a worry. That's an issue because he's your he's one of your attacking players. If you're playing for crosses, which we were, and he's not in a position to receive it, you're in trouble. You're not really going to score. You've got one or two other players in the box against five defenders. So I agree with Mateo and Patrick Bamford for for their well, for Bamford's flaws in front of goals, which we have seen recently. He's in those areas where it's scaring defenders. Adding Mateo Joseph on that, you know, in that last ten minutes, we had two or three crosses across the box that were inches away from scoring. You know, a bit of calmness and quality, and we would have scored, and we have done in the past. And that helps when you have players up top who have that presence in the box. And just on subs, uh, 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 like whether it's frustra- fr- frustration or not, look, yeah, I get it. I do. <laughs> we want to see, we want to see Nonto. You know, we want to see Dan James come on. We want to see Matteo Joseph, these exciting young players. We want to see them all. But but as a as a manager, what Daniel Farker does during the weeks of training, he sets up a team, and that's the team he wants to win the game. That's why he picks that team because he thinks that's the best team to win the game. I think Pep Guardiola said it a few years ago. If he has to make tactical subs, he's failed. That's what he said. It's a failure because you set the 11 up to win that game. That's the point of the 11, right? The ideal situation is for any manager, you set the 11 up, you're 2 3 0 up with 20 minutes to go, and you can bring these impact guys on and maybe get another goal or, or show up shop. That's an ideal situation. Now, we're not seeing that. The 11 who is out there, whether you think it's right or wrong, that's a discussion, right? The 11 who the manager picks are not doing that they're squandering these chances so it gets to the 70th minute and daniel farker's going right they're not doing what what you know they're not finishing it they're not finishing the game off they're not doing what we did in training all week so now i'm gonna have to bring two or three more attackers on and that's where the kind of panic comes into it and that kind of chaotic football comes in but but that's that's what managers do they set they, they literally choose the 11 because that's the best 11 in their heads to win the game any if they have to bring a sub on for a tactical reason not fitness in their heads, they've failed. Um, so I, I get the frustration of the eleven and who we should start in that eleven. But any subs made for tactical reasons are because that eleven simply didn't do enough um, in the minutes. Of course, if it's an injury thing, it's completely different because you're going to play a certain mm. amount of minutes. And I think that was the case with Nonto. I think he said originally that he should be back by Middlesbrough, and we've pushed that forward what a week and a half, two weeks. He's yeah. not match fit with these last three games with this break now. I expect and I really want Nonto to start. I think he looks really good. The yeah. biggest thing for me, though, a lot of his best plays for me came down that left. And that that's when it gets a bit tricky because Somerville is on that side. What do you do there? That's the situation we've got. Play him in that 10 and can he drift out left? I like that. I like that idea. But I think Nonto, these last three games now, is, could could be our most important player. I was going to say... You know what I've seen from him, Joe? I just thought, sorry, I know you know what I've seen from him recently is that ability to shoot with both feet, and that is key. You saw it again. He scored a brilliant goal with his left the other week. He nearly scored an outstanding goal yesterday with his left as well, cutting inside. He's both-footed, or he's, he's, that's a skill he's learned, I think, and that's dangerous for any defender, any team coming mm-hmm. up against. 
he's finding his form. He's showing impact. He's, he's been aggressive. His quality on the ball is getting a lot better. He's, he's, look, he can be on the wing or central areas. He's dangerous. He's going to be key for us in these three games, I think. And I think Daniel yeah. Farkin didn't want to risk that injury after a certain minute, which didn't work. That didn't work. But we have him for three games now, and let's hope that yeah. he can be the guy that gets us through. That's that's the hope, isn't it? I guess that's the thing. He could he could genuinely be the ace in the pack now, um, yeah. coming back at at full speed. I think same for Roberts. I thought Roberts looked really good as well. To be honest, I think uh, that right hand side could work could work really well. To be honest, so let's hope. Listen, I do want to I do want to move it on. Obviously, we've done thirty five minutes. We can argue over Saturday and with. You know, people have oh, everyone has difference of opinions, but we've now got to laser focus on on what is the biggest three games of of this season coming up. We've got like I, I, I'm trying not to. I said weeks ago it won't go down to the last day. It's definitely going to go down there now. It is. It is what it is. I was wrong. Um, but in order for Leeds United to put themselves in a position, these next two are the huge, and it, 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 it you know. I, I'm convinced, I'm convinced that we might not win them both, um, you know, but I'm also convinced that I don't see Leicester going picking up six points. I don't I don't see Ipswich going picking up six points. Um, so we have to have faith. I, 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 my thing is, right, had Ipswich have won yesterday, I'd have said, right, it's probably playoffs because Leicester do have a game in hand and Ipswich would have had three points on us. They didn't. They got a point. Um, so we're well. We're well in the run. We're well in this now. You know, Ipswich don't play for two weeks as well um, because of the game with Coventry and that. So they've got like two weeks off. Uh, obviously, we play Monday night. Um, how are we feeling with these two? I want to ask. Let me ask that question, Luke. I'll come to you. Is Leeds United playing away from home going to be better? Knowing that Middlesbrough need a result if they, you know, they're probably out of the top six, all told, but they'll want to put in a good performance. It's a big game for them in, in Teesside. Um, and Car- Carrick doesn't strike me as the manager that's going to sit back anyway. He's not, he's not that kind of manager. Um, QPR, QPR got dragged back into the relegation um, fight yesterday um, with, with results not going their way. I think Birmingham beat... Co- this is the mad thing. Birmingham beat Coventry 3 fucking nil. This is what we're dealing with. This is how wild this league is. So, Luke, do you think it could actually help Leeds United being away from home in the next two? It can't be any worse than being at home, can it, mate? It's not scoring well, in 180 <laughs> minutes of football. So, um, yeah, I think it will because I think teams... I mean, whilst the blueprint's there to beat us uh, and not concede against us, I would expect that teams in front of their own fans might have a little bit more, a little yeah. bit more grit about them, where they'll actually come at us a little bit. Maybe not. Maybe maybe they won't. But um, I would expect so. Um, and 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 that that's that's going to work in our favour ultimately. Look, we were too good at home all season up until recently, um, and teams couldn't live with us even even when they sat back. We still had we had. Too many, too many options, and 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 just managed to un- unlock them by nook or crook. Some games it depending on a penalty and and whatever else. But um, if we remember back to the start of the season, we weren't that great at home either. We drew with Chef Wednesday, I think it was at home, and was it Rob Rotherham? No, Rotherham was away, wasn't it? Um, West Brom. Uh, West Brom. Uh, yeah, West Brom. Um, and there was a few funny results early on in the season, so we almost seemed to have had a big purple patch in the middle at home, and then we sort of locked up again with 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 the blueprint print how to get result at Ellen Road. So I think away from home is where we've probably struggled the majority of the season. But teams will be looking at our results now and think, do you know what? We could probably get a result against Leeds. They're not they're not they're not all yeah, that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um if they do, I think that will I think that will play into our hands. I I really do. But whether or not these teams do it is is a completely different matter. I think any any manager with anything about them that's quite happy to, to play for a draw and maybe nick it, nick it in the last few minutes or, or nick a goal and sit back then I, sh- I worry for us I do worry for us because I don't think we've got I don't think we've got anything different I don't think I think we've used every trick in the book that, that we've got available to us at the minute uh, and if teams want to sit back and defend it's going to take 
pre Somerville going down and winning a penalty or you know a, a bit of magic from somewhere because the style of play that we've got and 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 the possession based football that we play is frustrating but it's not going to it's not going to win you games 4 or 5 nil unfortunately at the minute no Locker, do you think like Middlesbrough for example it's a derby for them mm. um, it's a big game for them Every, you can't every see, team. Carrick's, Carrick's not sitting behind the ball, though, is he? He didn't against Ipswich. Uh, no, I think for them, what makes sense now is Middlesbrough. Look, they're probably out of the playoffs, but if they had any chance of doing it, they'd probably have, well, they have to get three points without a doubt. Yeah, I, I, I don't think they will, but if they did, that would they'd have to get three points. And I doubt they'd soak pressure up and try to get a goal on the counter. Look, they might, but I highly doubt that. I think the fans would want them to go for it at this point. They're kind of in that position now where we could get top six. So you want to be entertained. Your fans want to go there. They want to be entertained. You're playing Leeds. They want an entertaining game. They want the players to go for it. Um, I'd hope anyway. And and that's probably the right mentality. But yeah, it, it's every t- every team we've seen recently. It, winning winning Leeds means a lot. And it just does. And that's not just because we're Leeds. That's because of the fact we've just come down from the Premier League and beating a team like that. That's that's You can put that on your drug cabinet, you know, in this, in this league this season. You know, of all these amazing players we've got, you know, Look at Coventry, like the scenes yesterday, you know, beating Leeds is what was required for Blackburn to probably stay up. And fair play, they did that because they really, mm. really wanted it and they got it. They took their moment and they've got a player who can do that. And we didn't and they took advantage of it. And it's the same for QPR, it's exactly the same. A team like QPR, they're not going to be wanting in League One, are they, at all? And, and, and who, who's they got? They've got Leeds United who are wounded. They're going to really want it. Uh, both these teams are. It's going to be tough, yeah. We've just got, I said this all year, and it, it's as simple as this, because our players are unbelievable. We've seen that. Look at the awards. But we just need to be us, the good us that we were before the last four or five games before the international break. We need to find that. We find that. We beat any team in the league. We've shown that. We've beaten Leicester. We've beaten Ipswich. Apart from, you know, Southampton. We haven't beaten yet. Mm. But if we find the us with these individual players who are too good for this level, not us, Somerville, Rutter, on their day, are unplayable. If they turn up, the defence does their job. We have any. We can beat anyone. And this is it now. There's three games left. In, in a way, we've got nothing to lose. That's the mentality you've got to go with. You know, we're third. We need to get second. You've got to win all your last three games, most probably. Let's start here. You know, I'm fed up a team. We being the team that keeps this team safe or gives this team hope for the top six. I'm fed up of doing that. I want us to be that team now who beats mm. the team and stops them getting top six or makes them get relegated. I've had enough of it. I've had enough of us being nice to these clubs. Let's be dirty leads again and uh, set <laughs> them down. You know what I mean? It'll be nice. It will be nice. There is so much importance, Evie, in the fact that we'll have played QPR and Middlesbrough before Ipswich play again. Um, mm. If we were to drop points there, it gives them a target to set with three games still left to go and we'll only have one. Does that make sense? So it's like, let's say we get, we get, I don't know, two points. Let's say we draw them. They would then only need a point out of the next two and it's like Kira McKenna can manage that better. Um, knowing, look, we've got two games before the final day and if we, you know, win one and get a point in the other, that, that puts us away, you know? So as much as... It's it's good that we play. It's also can have a bit of an adverse effect. Whereas if we do win them both, it really really puts massive pressure on McKenna with three games, knowing that Leeds United have. I think it would be a five point gap on them. Going and then obviously we all play on the final day. But how do you see that one going? Because obviously if we, it's we've got to win them both clearly. But like from a from a pressure m- perspective, if we can win them both, like that's so. Mentally for Ipswich, it's like, oh, fuck, we have to win, you know. And um, I remember Southampton, when they all spoke before one of their most recent games, the manager says it's must win. Will Smallbone came out and said it's must win. And they dropped the ball because it's a different kind of pressure. So it's so important we pick up maximum in it in these next two. I think one of the things that we've got to think is the fact that They've also dropped points when they could have put this to bed. So we've yeah. all done it. All three of the teams at the top have done it. None of us have actively, yes, they got one point, but had they have won that game, they're in the top two pretty much. So as in like it's secure, but 
they didn't. They got one point, which means that one loss and or even a draw and us winning still puts us ahead of them on goal difference. So they've still dropped the ball themselves. We've done, usually we do better if we go first. We don't deal with after pressure very well. Um, you know, we, we've done it when we've gone ahead in the earlier games. So say if Leicester hadn't have played on Friday and they were playing the three o'clock game on the Saturday and we play that 12.30 game, that mental aspect of it, I think, is slightly different because we're setting the pace, whereas Leicester allowed us to hope players maybe think, right, well, we just need this to save our legs and, and, and to kind of see the next few games as a marathon rather than a sprint in that Blackburn game. But I do think if QPR win their next game, then they're fine. They're sorted now. I think there's too many teams below them. Even on, even though there's not that many points, their goal difference is better than pretty much everybody below them. So I think that they're okay. So we've got to hope for a QPR win. We then, they've then essentially got very little to play for. Um, Middlesbrough, I think you're right. I, I think that they have to come at us if they want to get something, which will work in our favour. But we have to start fast. And I know it's something that Jura has said all season long, that when we come out fast, you know, which we did in the home game, you know, it was a very ecstatic 3-2 kind of, you know, very, you know, heart-raising kind of game. Um, and wasn't there like three goals in the first 10 minutes in that mm. game? So we can do it. We just need them. And I think Nonto will be important. I think um, I'd love it if Anthony, I'm not going to lie, I'd love it if Anthony somehow, considering mm. he's like the forgotten soldier for pretty much the entire season. And I would love it if he kind of came on and, you know, got his cape on and, and got us over the line. Mm. Um but I think we do have the advantage with playing first. I think that will work in our favour. We don't have to think about anybody else because we don't have to match or do better. Or We just have to do us and that's it. Whereas when you're thinking, oh, they've dropped points. Oh, so we don't need to maybe go as hard because they've dropped the points. Whereas if we play first, it works it works in our favour. And I'm relatively positive. I think that um, I don't think we'll need three wins. I don't even think no. we'll need two wins. I'm not saying I don't want three wins. Yeah. I just, I genuinely think a win and a draw. And I think we go up on goal difference because I think the, I think Ipswich will lose points in silly places like we have because they have you know this is why it's so ridiculous that we've gone into such extravagant meltdowns because all three of us have dropped points and even though Southampton have have, have done pretty well they're, they're not amazing yes if they win their games in hand they're on the same points but our goal difference is better so that essentially works as another point you know yes they may catch up but if we can't catch up to Ipswich and Leicester, then how on earth are Southampton are not only going to come catch up with us and then yeah. overtake us to get to them? If nobody yeah. believes that we can do it, how come all of a sudden we're yeah, believing yeah. in a team exactly. like Southampton that they can do it because who, they've dropped who the ball robbed as Watford? well? Who robbed Watford, by the way? You had cleverly yeah. coming out. Yeah, so, and they scored ten, in the ten last minutes minute. have added time yeah. for yes. multiple times this season, yeah. you know, that, they, that they've done that. And the same, the same with Ipswich, but... I think as well, I, it's never going to happen, but fans can't see these games as the ones, if we don't go up, they can't see these games as the games that we didn't get promoted by. It was earlier on in the season that lost us. If if we don't go up, it you can't judge players when they've got 43, 44, 45, 46 games in their legs it's the games earlier on in the season where we drop silly points. It's not these games that mm. cost us anything. And we are doing yeah. a hell of a lot better than anybody actually thought. When we got when we were in December and, you know, getting Melier sent off and losing to Preston, if you were to say that, you know, we were in within touching distance, within one win and games. one loss yeah, of, yeah, of yeah, getting yeah. the title, not even just getting automatic, like 
imagine if this all flips around and we get the title. Yeah, you know, and that's how silly it is, is it's so close that it's anything could happen. Even if Leicester do go up, it doesn't mean they've not shit the bed with this. We yeah. should never have been able to catch up to them. You know, we shouldn't. They they should well, be miles clear. They should have been promoted in March. Yeah, you're 100%. And listen, it's it's car crash at Leicester as well. They all wanted Enzo out on Friday. He didn't even do any post-match press conference. He kept the players in the in the um, changing rooms for an hour after the game. Did Enzo obviously read in the riot act? That's going to go one of two ways. Let's hope it goes the way we want it to. Um, do you think, Lockie, there's, there's a positive for us having such a long layoff? Obviously, we bemoaned the fact that we play Monday, but... You know, that's going to be, what's that, um, nine days, nine days, eight days a between days, games. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a decent yeah. time is. off, isn't it, to, to get is. them ready for this game. And I just, like, I just ate when Eva was speaking then. It, people using this word bottle jobs and all that. We were 12 and 17 points off Ipswich and Leicester. Who's bottled yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, We're a win away from being top of the league now. And mm. that was a few months ago. So we've got here, we've done a bloody good job to get in this position. We have. It's just about controlling this horrible ending that everyone's struggling with. It's happening in the Premier League, bro. It's happening in the Premier League. It's crazy. It's great to watch. It's great for sport, but it's terrible for us. And that's the way it is. But yeah, like, yeah, I think it's clear. Daniel Farker now has, you know, without the international, he didn't have a break, an international break, did he? Let's be honest, he had no players, really. Now he's got full squad to train with for seven or eight days and that is golden you can get so much information across important information across in those seven or eight days look the players just need to work bloody hard in these seven days just listen to the manager work just work hard work hard have a good week of training listen to the video analysis listen to the coach train hard it's it's i know it sounds simple but just do it just train hard go to training train hard get everything you need out of each session get it done get the information in the brain and reset, reset now. It's a, a nice little break for us to just to reset. Maybe we'll have a day or two off just to reset the brains, get back into training and work on what they need to work on. Whether that's movement, whether that's how to break down in the final third, where we should be, whatever. I don't care. Work on it now. Seven days is brilliant, honestly. Yeah. It's like that you can do so much information in, in a week. Get that done. Even some set piece routines, some short. Can we go short for a set piece, please? That's when we're best. Yeah. Genuinely, it's, or just honestly, just everyone go front post and just flick on. I yeah. don't know. It goes front post. Just, just do it. something. Just front post. But <laughs> yeah, something. that that gap is massive. I'll feck and take them, mate. I'll yeah. take them for a week. Honestly, <laughs> get Joe down there. Get Joe down <laughs> off that new signing. <laughs> just whip balls in. But yeah, um, nine, yeah. nine days is, is is huge in football. Massive. Yeah, it especially is, the championship. Yeah. When last time you had nine days with a full squad? Yeah, I don't think we have apart from international. No. But like you say, we had no one. Um, yeah. uh, big up Danny not another Leeds prospect yeah what you also have to do though is flip that round on to the other teams as well this is the point where they're not the only teams who's doing it Locke says it all the time Danny he says but Joe if we'd have won with our game in hand we'd have also been seven points now with the game in hand we'd have in effect been up we're not the only one doing it that's the thing but it's almost like we are like Levy made a great point it's like well Southampton are going to get autos in what world are they then going to usurp three teams in the process of doing it? It's like, just just, just try be calm. I know it's not easy. We're all stressed, right? I get I just it. Just from you know? Demar there. Um, Pookie. They'll think, they'll think uh, Farker brought Pookie back. <laughs> you turn up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good shout. It's a great <laughs> shoot. Um, there you go, Alex. That, that's what we need, mate. We need uh, Birmingham fan. Always watch the live streams. Hope you go up. Cheers, mate. Um... Cheers, Hope you stay up, by the way, at the expense of Wednesday in Huddersfield. <laughs> there you go. Um, Luke. Now we might need Huddersfield to stay to, to win yeah, that last game yeah, of the season, though. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's not um, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, it would. How good would it be, right, if they did do that and Kevin Nagel had to come out and be like, L star star DS, we <laughs> saved you and all that, and we'd be like, Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, we're going. <laughs> um, Luke, we've got eight, nine days. I know it's hard to make a prediction now, but what's he going to do? Does he go back to Bamford? Does he? Ha, ha, what will he do? For me, he's probably going to go back there. But I think, I think, I think. I mean, other than what everyone's calling for, which is absolutely outrageous, you're not going to play. Um, 
as long as we get over the fact that actually we're not going to see Mateo Joseph start for Leeds this season, barring any mad injuries and stuff, we're not going to see him start this season. So we'll get that idea out of your head as Leeds fans because we're not going to see it. Whilst some of us want it, it's not going to happen. He's not going to play over somebody we paid 12 million quid for and somebody who was was absolutely vital to our changing form at the turn of the year. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. So, um, I don't know. It, is the Luke, sense. What's your preferred 11? You've My got eight days 11... now. Everyone's fit, I believe. I think by Dallas, everybody is fit. Mm-hmm. Like, who's your who's your 11? Another tough one, mate, um, because... Conor Roberts looked really good at right back, but I think Archie's best position is right back for us. Um, so that's that that that's a big question for me. Um, uh, right, I'm going to go through it quickly off the top of my head. I'm going to go obviously Melier. I'm going to go Archie Gray right back. Uh, Conor Roberts is an impact sub, uh, and then I'm going to have the obviously Ampadu, Rodon, Junior Furpo, Kamara, and Gruev in midfield. I'm having Willie Nonto on the right. Three on the left, Rutter in the middle, and Paddy up top. So I don't got any changes to that because I, I would, I would actually keep Roberts at right back and put put Archie on the bench, you know, and bring Kamara back in. Not because he's not because he's out of legs. I just really like. I think the left connection when they get it right looks better. The triangles that we get from Kamara. Somerville and Furpo for me looks better. Furpo gets down the byline a lot more often when he's got Kamara there. I don't, I don't remember Gray doing it all that often. I think Gray was very right, left, right, left, whereas Kamara sent, tends to sit in that space and they do. And if we're being honest, I know we're left, all left are we, but that's where a lot of our goals come from. So I, I think I'd prefer Roberts to stay at right back and maybe see Gray hit the bench, which is wild, I know, but that's what I would prefer. Um, I don't see how you can drop Rutter. He, as bad as he's been, I just he, he could create. No, a I think of magic. the nine days. Yeah, will be yeah, fine. maybe. I hopefully, think it maybe. Would be. Hopefully, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I would, I would advocate putting Pat back in, and and people will be mad. But um, any thoughts on that? Like look, Evie, do you have a preferred selection? Um, I think if you put Pat back in, I would have Dan James rather than Nonto on. And that's simply because it gives us something different on each wing. If you are going to have Roberts that will do better interchanges up and down, he will will work better with Dan James. I I think that that's probably, that would be mine. I understand that, that Nonto was, you know, our best player in probably the last couple of times that he's, he's been on, he's made a change, made a difference, but, that would be that would be me, but I, I wouldn't if he if Nonto was to start, I'm absolutely fine with that. Mm. I just think from the difference that you can get from the right and the left instead of having mirrored attacks on both sides, that's the only reason. And neither Nonto nor Somerville like to cross to Bamford. It takes Furpo to cross to Bamford and it depends on how far we allow Connor Roberts to keep on getting up the pitch. Because if Connor Roberts goes as far forward as Nonto, uh, as Furpo does, we have to make sure that we cover Roberts like Gruev covers for non uh, for Junior Furpo. Mm-hmm. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. I- for me, I can't drop Nonto though. I can't, but I no, hear what, why, why are you that, saying it? Because um, that cross is good, isn't it? Yeah. Go on. Sorry, mate. I just, he just for me when I'm w- we're watching the game, I just see he just seems to me to have the most energy. He just seems to be the most sharp, and that's obviously because he's not played as much as others. I just, I just think these last three games he's going to be our best player in all three of them. I think he's going to be absolutely key, just based on the fact that he's not played 46 games this season, or up to that point, you know, 40 odd games this season. You know, because of the start and being on the bench, he's just full of energy. Uh, of course, with it, Italy as well, wanting to impress. I think these three games could be key for him in terms of that Italian national stuff in the summer. Um, so, yeah, I, just Nonto's got to play for me. I don't care where it is. I seriously don't care at this point. I just want him in the team. I think he's key for us. I really do. And I, I, I actually, O'Connor Roberts at right back. That's tough. Mm-hmm. I'd be happy with both. Honestly, I think they're both do a different thing there. I think they both do quite well, but 
if we're going back to what the team that got us on that amazing run, get the team that, you know, with nine days in training to really work on, I think I think I'll go back to Archie right back with Kamara and um and thingy to uh Grev midfield, yeah. I think I think that does that does work. Um Jeremy's coming with the question, Joe, this is random, but if you're in a promotion race, would you deny players leaving on international break in lieu of time bonding together? Uh if I'm being honest, unless it's competitive, then March internationals need to be binned off anyway, mate. There's no point in them whatsoever. Um it's not just obviously what's happened to us, but when you consider Arsenal, City, Liverpool, they were all in title races and they lost their players for 10 days for what were glorified friendlies. The only competitive game was Wales, Finland and Poland versus thingy. But but remember last year, Joe, in Prem, when we had the international break, we lost, that's where we lost Adams. I think we lost yeah. Nonto and Rodrigo for a period as well and it ruined yeah. us. Yeah. It's just pointless having them there when you've got, after the international break, I think in the Prem there was 10 games left and for us there was six. It's like, yeah. how can you, you know what I mean? Career, not career, but season ended injury for, a, I don't know, 10 weeks off an international friendly. It, it just needs to be binned off that one. It's pointless, mate. So, yeah. Can I make just yeah. a completely off topic point? Um, obviously, I know that Piro has been incredibly frustrating throughout the course of the season, and we have looked better with Bamford in the side. But I do want people to realise that Bamford wasn't available for a large portion of the start of the season. So without Piro there, we still don't win the games that we won earlier on. Not saying that he scored the goals, but if there's no... We also know that Bamford needs competition in order to get the best out of Bamford if we don't buy Piro. Yes, he hasn't worked overall, and I will admit to that. I'm not trying to sit here and defend him but people saying that Piro is a waste of money seem to forget that we still needed him at the beginning of the season, regardless of what he's doing right now. We still needed him then. You can't go back and rewrite history. Bamford no. wasn't available for August and half of September. So if you take Piro out of those games, regardless of whether he has actually scored, who else would we have had to replace him? If we if we're saying that Joseph, because Joseph was also injured during that point, so he's not even uh, a shout either. Who else would we have replaced Bamford with 100%. if we didn't have Piro at that? Even he still scored so, twelve goals and got three yeah, assists. Yeah, exactly. Twelve goals. 12 goals. But, uh, so many I mean, people are just like Piro is useless. It was a waste yeah. of money, and I get it's frustrating, but he still played pretty much half a season. And Bamford didn't. Yes, we've looked better in the second half of the season. I'm not denying that. But he wasn't a waste of money because we still needed that player regardless. Because if Joffy's not good enough, Joseph wasn't available, Anthony's a winger, who else did we have? Yeah, I'm seeing people saying that he scored more goals than Bamford. Of course he has. He's played 42 times for us this season. Bamford's played 30, I think. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, the one thing I mean, about... I, I, one thing with Sorry, uh, sorry, Luke. No, you're all right, Lucky. Sorry, mate. I was, I was just going to say, like, for me, at the end of the season, whether we're in the Premier League or, or champ- Championship, Perot's, Perot has to work hard in the summer. He really does. I think if he really wants to establish himself at this club as a constant player, as a team that will be progressing, whether that's in the Championship or the Premier League, which will be even harder, obviously, he has to work hard in the summer. He really has to work hard on himself and the, his game to improve kind of more aspects of it. I, I really do think that. He's definitely had his 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 time this season. He scored twelve goals, eleven, twelve goals. That's big for us. He's played his mm. part more more than a lot of players. He really has, and I, full respect. And he's been that guy who, where we were one 0 up, he'd get that second goal and make us feel comfortable. You know, he's got a lot of those goals that got us that two 0 up or three 0 up that made us relax. So he's definitely played a big role for us this year. Not not the most effective role, not the role we some of us probably expected. On maybe twenty goals, some of us thought we, he could get. And he's got to work hard in the summer to really fit this team. He really has. But he's played his part. He definitely has played his part for sure, yeah. 100%. Yeah. He does will be useful, even though he often does score in games where we're either already winning. Guess what? We wouldn't have the goal difference if those goals hadn't have gone in. So that yeah. that goal difference could be that extra point that gets us over the line at the end of the season. So, yes, he has only won us probably two games this season, but he has scored goals and goals 
mean that you've got a better goal difference. So every yeah. single part of member of that team is a valuable member of that team because we see mm. when one of them, you know, especially a starting 11 goes out, we then have to adapt. And sometimes we struggle when you would, when you then add the pressure of lots of games in a week or nearing the end of the season. So I just, I, you know, I just don't like seeing hate for hate's sake and saying within less than one season that a player has been a, a complete waste of money. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot uh, of players and, and, in general take a couple of seasons. And to he get never in. played yeah. out as an out and out nine at Swansea either. Even if you look at his positions over the course of a season when he was getting all these goals, he wasn't a nine people. And in the Swansea and it's, side, it's had... they had so much more space as well. Do you know, like they yeah, weren't yeah. they weren't backs to the wall jobs like like pretty no. much half of our season's been realistically on it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's not that type of player that's you know he's he's a big lad. He's not got he's not got yeah. fantastic feet. He's not he's not yeah. got that flair. He's he had, he had far more space and shooting opportunities. It's, it's pr pretty much as simple as that. Yeah, for me, Perra has to work on that awareness around him. First touch has been off. Whether that's confidence, I'm not too sure. Yeah. But that's not that's been off. That that special, you know, like Harry Kane, for example, who's not not the most mobile player, but he's really good deep because he's worked hard on that side of his mm. game. Harry Kane, as he as he gets yeah. older, and Perra needs to do that. Just work on them deeper areas to be more effective and. He'll be he'll be a good player for us in the future if he works on that. I, I believe, and we've got to remember yeah. as well. He's had two or three really important assists this season. I remember one or two for Dan James that he's played through, which were winners. Um, so he's definitely played his part. Yeah, hundred percent he has. Yeah, definitely he has. They all have. They all have. That's the main thing. Yeah. Um, they all have, and hopefully, you know, we can we can we can be celebrating with them at the end of the season when we secure promotion. Um, I'd love the auto spots, if not the auto spots. We live to to fight for uh, for another few weeks uh, for the playoffs, but I just can't deal with that. I've been there, done that walk T-shirt. I can't be arsed with that shit, but if we have to go up that way, we have to go up that way, don't we? Um, look, um, in terms of what's around the corner, there is Saints versus Preston on Tuesday. Let's see how that goes. Obviously, mm. Leicester play West, West Brom on, on Saturday lunchtime, and obviously, we don't play now until Monday, so no game for Ipswich either, so... Let's see what West Brom can can do for us Saturday morning, you know, and uh, and and hopefully Carlos Corbran can do something, and you know, and then and then we get ready for Monday night under the lights at the Riverside. Oh God, I'm getting nervous yeah. now already thinking about it. It's <laughs> going to be wild. It is going to be wild. But um, I think we we've done over an hour. I think we've we've spoken enough. Hopefully, you know. Yeah, we're all in hoping and praying tactics right now, aren't we? But hopefully with with the long layoff, with the rest now, get the players, get stuck into them. You know, hopefully we can we can get it over the line. Um but I can't give you anything more. It's not hope. It's hope. Yeah. Alien can't play, Jamie. Oh Alien can't play. Alien can't play, Greenwood can't play. That's their positives because they're both on loan. So um, that's something. Although big up to Adam Forshaw and Luke Ayling, by the way, uh, who both got assists yeah. in their games. So the the X's want it more than the want 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 it more than the uh, the current misses. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. Um, yeah. So we move. What's that, Jamie Bollocks? What's Bollocks, bro? What's Bollocks? Oh, bollocks, he can't play. Sorry, yeah. Uh, me and Locks will be back at lunchtime for title talk. I think we need to uh, change the name of that, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> playoff chat or something like that. Maybe that's probably going to be uh, the best, but yeah. Um, before we finish, uh, Locky, are we going to get promoted via the automatic spots? Yes or no? Three games to go. Yeah. Evie? Yes. Luke? Um. Yes. Yeah. Same. Let's yeah, fucking do this. For me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We're all in copium stage. <laughs> Don't worry about it, bro. <laughs> Let the chat say no. We all say yes. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you in a bit, folks. Have a nice evening, man. Peace out.